Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the memorable Victor Herbert operetta, Babes in Toyland. Starring Gordon McRae and his celebrated guest star, Lucille Norman. Our program tonight is dedicated to thousands of young musicians all over the country who are studying tonight's operetta and its composer through the pages of Keyboard Junior, a magazine for young musicians. The current issue also features a story about the Railroad Hour, its stars, cast, and producers. Our choir, as usual, is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, what do you know? It's the 1st of December, the beginning of the holiday month. So we're going back to the storybook days, to the days of remember when. Days of once upon a time. When you've grown up, my dears, and are as old as I, you'll often ponder on the years that roll so sweet. And of the many lands you will have journeyed through, you'll oft recall the best of all, the land your childhood knew. Your like to have you meet some of the celebrated citizens of Toyland, though they're really probably old friends of yours. Fellow citizens, forward, march! May we present Miss Hood. First name, Red Riding. Lovely child, very devoted to her grandmother. That's our friend Peter over there. That boy has a mad passion for pumpkin pie. And say, there's Simple Simon and Miss Muffet, who doesn't care a bit for spiders. Tom Tom, the piper's son. And little boy Blue, boy farmer. Say, grab your trumpet, Mr. Blue, and let's all forward march. <laughs> Say, who's crying? Why, it's little Bo Pete. What seems to be the trouble, Bo? Now, you haven't gone and lost those sheep again. Don't cry, Bo Peep, don't cry. To find your sheep, we'll try. We'll seek them far, we'll seek them wide. We'll seek them low and high. Don't cry, Bo Peep. 
sheep don't cry, to find your sheep will try. We'll seek them far, we'll seek them wide. We'll seek them Lord. So you see, Bo Peep, there's really no use worrying. Never mind, Bo Peep, we will find your sheep, no matter where they be. So be gay, Bo Peep, go astray, your sheep, soon home again, you'll see. Give a smile, Bo Peep, for a while your sheep may cruise in pastures new. Never mind, Bo Peep, we will find your sheep and bring them home to you. Dear, dear fellow citizens of Toyland. Mary! Come to Mary, Mary! How are you, Mary? I'm quite well, thank you, considering I'm so contrary. Dear Mary, have you had any word from Alan and Jane? No, Tom Tom. Their wicked Uncle Barnaby says they've both been lost at sea. And if it's true, then I'll never see my beloved Alan again. Golly, Mary. It looks as if you'll have to spend the rest of your life teaching arithmetic. And everybody knows what a dreadful thing arithmetic is. It's so everlastingly dull. Two and two just always seem to equal four. But I'll give it some variety. If a steamship weighed a thousand tons and sailed five thousand miles With a cargo large of over shoes and carving knives and files If the mates were almost six feet high and the bosun near the you subtract or multiply to find the captain's name. Put down six and carry two. Carry two. Carry two. Gee, but this is hard to do. Hard to do. Hard to do. You can sing and sing. I can't do that sum. If a pound of fruit costs 13 cents at half past one today, and the grocer is so bold he wears a dollar five to pay, and if with every pound of tea he will give to cut glass plates, how soon would Willie break his face on his new One long arithmetic problem. Psst, Alan. Shh, Jane. Don't give away my disguise. Uncle Barnaby tried to have us killed at sea, remember? And he won't hesitate to have us killed here. Do you think he'll recognize me disguised as a gypsy fortune teller? I don't recognize you, Alan. You're my own brother. Oh, look, a gypsy fortune teller. Perhaps he can tell me about my own true love. Fortune teller? Uh, yes, my pretty. What is your name? Floretto. Floretto who flirts with the future. Will you tell me my fortune? Give me your hand. Ah, such a pretty hand. So soft. Ah, yes. I can read the entire future. For I am a Romany rye, a timorous sprite of the wildwood. I dabble in magic, both comic and tragic. Oh, which I have been from my childhood. Great is my mystical might The blizzard and avalanche mind me 
I'm likewise a voodoo at casting a hoodoo. A qualified artist, you'll find me. Floretto, Floretto, the gypsy am I. The past or the future, to tell you I'll try. Your fortune I'll read from your palm at a glance. They notice I also collect in advance. Floretto, Floretto. I'd be glad to pay you in advance, Senor Floretto. How much will you charge me? A kiss. Oh, dear. Uh, uh, now tell me, uh, what do you read in my palm? Your name begins with an M. <gasps> That's right. It's not Methuselah or Mahirabu or Marmaduke or Minnehaha. I have it. It's Mary. You're wonderful. I always thought so. <laughs> now, now, let me see. You, Mary should marry a chap whose name begins with an A. Alan. Ah, yes, Alan. He's charming, gifted, and attractive. <laughs> to know him is to love him. But he's dead and will never come back to me. What's happening here? Barnaby. I will not have gypsies wandering around giving Toyland a bad name. Shoe? Shoe? Now, you better be careful where you put your shoe. <laughs> Besides, I have an important announcement to make. I have decided to marry the lovely, though sometimes contrary, Mary. Oh, no. Mary. But, Barnaby, aren't you a little, well, old for me? Certainly not. Besides, Barnaby, I'm, well, I'm in love with somebody else. With Alan? But uh, he's been lost at sea. He's uh, asleep with the oysters. Makes me feel like I'm swimming in tartar sauce. <laughs> I have positive proof that he will never return. No, I'm in love with somebody new. With, uh, with uh, 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 Barney O'Flynn. Mary? Who is Barney O'Flynn? Oh, Tom, Tom, I can't marry that old ogre Barnaby. So I just made him up. He's a lad from County Clare. It is the wild one comes from there. And be sure it is in his cover, hope you'll see. For the girls he cast a spell, oh, I know that very well. For between us from that spell, I am not free. There's no calling in the land, could his eloquence withstand. Should he speak to her as he has spoke to me? And me heart and its soul, you're the thief of me soul. Me senses he have taken to. Both faith, Ryan Helen, and Venus excelling, they'd never hold a rush light to you. all about me. Oh, no, Alan, it's not true. But you heard her. She's fallen in love with some County Clare Casanova named O'Flynn. What are we going to do, Alan? You must leave here, dear sister, and never return. Leave Toyland? I have nothing more to keep me here. Mary is in love with somebody else. And Uncle Barnaby might try to kill us if he found us here, Jane. I'll, I'll go with you. Goodbye, Toyland. Goodbye forever.
return in a moment with Act Two of Babes in Toyland. We have as our guest tonight the distinguished administrator of the Defense Transport Administration and member of the Interstate Commerce Commission, Mr. James J. Knudsen. And now, Mr. Knudsen. The effectiveness of the nation's mobilization effort and its ability to meet any future emergency depend on our great productive capacity and our unparalleled transportation system. To achieve a well-balanced national strength, the nation must build up its armed forces, it must build up its productive machine, and it must build up its transportation lifelines. Because the railroads serve every part of the nation, carrying everything movable for anybody, interconnecting every region into an immense productive unit, they are the primary carrier in our transportation network, both in time of peace and in national emergency. As was demonstrated during World War II, the railroads were capable not only of carrying 90% of our build military freight, but also of moving 70% of our intercity commerce. Now, with our current national emergency threatening to become even more serious, the fact that these essential carriers, the railroads, have been busy at work expanding and improving every part of their plant is important to all of us. Since the end of World War II, the railroads have spent an average of more than a billion dollars a year on improvements. Since the outbreak of fighting in Korea, the railroads have installed thousands of new freight cars in line with their pledge to increase the supply of these vital cars to a fleet of 1,850,000. This pledge has just been reaffirmed by the nation's railroads. They are making every effort to obtain the allocation of enough steel to build at least 10,000 new cars monthly as soon as it is possible to reach such a production rate. The Defense Transport Administration commends the railroads for their forthright action to increase their transportation capacity to meet the nation's needs and will continue its active effort to help obtain the materials required. Now, here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee version of Victor Herbert's musical fairy tale, Babes in Toyland, starring Gordon MacRae as Alan and Lucille Norman as Contrary Mary. When Jane and I left Toyland, never more to return, we went to a distant land. We found work in a spot that was the closest thing to the real toy land we loved so much. The shop of the master toy maker. We tried to forget our troubles in the busy preparation for Christmas. All right now, hurry, hurry, hurry. Every toy must be ready in time for Christmas. See that all the music boxes play on key. Good, good, good. Now, see that every mama doll says mama. Mama! Good, good. After all, we wouldn't want a mama doll to say Papa. Yes, well, I I guess just about everything is ready for Christmas. Yes, sir. And we're all beginning to sing the wonderful Christmas songs of praise. Hail to Christmas, joyous Christmas. Be gay, the day draws near. Hail to Christmas, joyous Christmas. Be gay. Kris Kringle, dear Kris Kringle, will bring our king to be. Now Kris Kringle, dear Kris Kringle, will bring our king to be. Yeah. 
that's the spirit, the Christmas spirit, to be exact. It, oh, oh, I almost forgot to mention, we have a new sales lady, a, a recent arrival in these parts. Her name is Mary, Mary Q. Contrary. Jane, did you hear that? Yes, Alan, but what do you suppose she's doing here? You must hide until we find out. Hey, you get in that packing box and I'll, I'll just stand here and pretend to be a wooden soldier. Oh, here comes our new sales lady now. Uh, welcome, Miss Contrary. Thank you, Master Toymaker. Now, you were to be in charge of all the dolls. Have a look around at the stock. You'll find quite a variety of them. Oh, thank you. Oh, how beautiful they all are. Dolls of all nations side by side on the same shelf. What a beautiful world that makes. Hello, little Norwegian doll. Hello, little Dutch doll with the pigtails and the wooden shoes. And this one, a British doll. Do you say Mama, Dolly? Meta! Oh, yes. And here's a French doll. Do you say Mama, too, little one? Vivi! Oh. <laughs> if Alan were not lost to me, we might have had such beautiful dolls of our own. And each night I would have sung lullabies to them. Oh, to sleep. Alan, but he certainly needs a paint job. A paint job? And he ought to have some medals on his chest. I'll just sew some on him. Oh, no, no, I forgot. He's a wooden soldier. Well, I'll just nail them onto him. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, dear, I wish you weren't wooden. I wish you were, Alan, so I could tell you how much I love you, how I ran off from that wicked Barnaby, and how I had to make up a sweetheart named O'Flynn to stay out of the old man's clutches. You made him up? He talks. Mary, it's me, Alan. Alan? Is it really Alan? Oh, Mary, I'll never leave you again. But wait. You're sure there's nobody named O'Flynn you love? Never. Never. There's one test of true love. The toys. The toys? Mm-hmm. Everybody knows that a toy is only worth something when there's a child to love it. Otherwise, it might just as well be wood and cloth and buttons. That's why toys always know when there's love around, especially at Christmas time. What happens, Alan? You just close your eyes. And if they feel that love is in the air, they start to march. My eyes are closed. I'm listening and loving. They're starting to march. The wooden soldiers, the beautiful dolls, the jacks in the box. Why, they're all falling in line. Forward, march! Oh, this is going to be a wonderful Christmas. Will you make it a Merry Christmas and marry me, Mary? Oh, yes, dear Alan. But only back in Toyland. Toyland, Toyland, dear little girl and boy land. While you dwell within it, you are ever happy there. Childhood's Joyland, Mystic Mary Toyland. Once 
Lovely guest Lucille Norman will be back in just one moment. And meanwhile, our thanks to Sam Edwards, Janet Stewart, Polly Bear, Lou Merrill, and to all the members of our company. Babes in Toyland with book and lyrics by Glenn McDonough and music by Victor Herbert was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? Have you made out your Christmas card list yet? It won't be long now until we're right in the middle of the holiday season. And that busy team of Santa Claus's helpers, your mailman, the post office, America's railroads, and the Railway Express Agency, will be working feverishly to handle the mountains of Christmas packages. Won't you help these hard-working folks and mail or express your packages and Christmas cards early? And when you do, please use Christmas seals as much as possible. By doing so, you help bring the priceless gift of health to fellow Americans suffering from tuberculosis. Thank you, Marvin. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here again is our charming contrary Mary, Lucille Norman. Thank you, Gordon. That was great fun. Made me feel like going out and buying up a whole new toy shop. Well, let's do it, Lucy. <laughs> What's on the show train next week, Gordon? Well, we're going to have some thrilling Johann Strauss music. The Gypsy Baron. Mm. And Mimi Benzel will be our guest. And we'll be waltzing, well, we'll be waltzing all over the place. Well, I'll set my dial at three-quarter time. <laughs> Good night, Gordon. Good night, Lucy. You are wonderful. All aboard. Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night. And the Gypsy Baron, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying Goodbye. <laughs> Babes in Toyland was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae appeared through the courtesy of Warner Brothers, producers of The Miracle of Fatima. Our choir was under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music was prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Until next week, this is Marvin Miller saying good night for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Tonight, the voice of Firestone features Thomas L. Thomas on NBC.